I know. <laughs> Look, similarities. <laughs> oh, yeah, thanks, Lisa. <laughs> Oh, this is pretty similar. Look at this. It's the uh, food sensation that has deeply divided the foodie world, the watermelon ham. For those brave enough to try it, and I am going to. Yeah, me too. Some say it's delightful, others say it's disgusting. There's only one way to settle this. Our culinary correspondent, Alice Zaslavsky, <laughs> thank you for coming in. How long have you spent preparing all this? Well, the watermelon ham itself took about three and a half days. What? And when I, we're talking shape-shifting food, yes. and when I say shape-shifting, it started out this size. Mm -hmm. And all I did was peel it and then dehydrate it and then smoke it. Right. And so after, and then baste it. So after all of that was done, look at it. It's just... What's the <laughs> point of it, I'm sorry? Like, why has someone even thought, hey, let's do this to a watermelon? Well, once you peel a watermelon, you notice that it does kind of look like an unbrined ham. So I should say I brined it before I dehydrated it. Okay, so yeah. the whole process is three and a half days. So once it's brined and once you dehydrate it and score it, it does kind of have like a hamminess to it. Yeah. And there's a place in the US that's selling these for $75 US a pop. 75 they've, they've got a month long waiting list of people coming in to try the watermelon ham. Why is it taken off so quickly? Well, I think it's a combination of social media and curiosity. <laughs> and because it's vegan as well, I think that, yeah. you know, it's got a it cues out the door. Mm. Mm. Uh, so the whole shape-shifting thing's been a fairly recent thing, am, am I right? Or is it uh, something that's been around for a while and all of a sudden we're talking about it? Well, people have been playing with food for hundreds, if not thousands of years, but I think that social media has really kind of spurred it on and the internet is fantastic for giving yeah. people new ideas. So things like, for example, the sweet potato toast, uh, which you'll get still. to try. Yeah, yeah listen, just, you know, keep I'm... eating, yeah, yeah, eat your food. Um, <laughs> the couscous, so this is a cauliflower couscous. This one over here. This yep. one over here. So so for people with dietaries or people who are curious about trying new flavours, mm. it's really opened up a whole new world of ideas. So something like, for example, these snossage rolls, or I like to call them party carrots. Check this one out. This is, um, would you like me to just skew fingers? Yeah, yeah here we go. Great. Fast. Okay, we'll start with this. Because I think, honestly, I've already gone through one shirt this morning. <laughs> yes, you have. <laughs> Viewers don't know that, now but I was not wearing red. I was not wearing red when we started so the program. So these are, these are sno 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 sausage, sausage roll. Because it's, it's a sausage roll, but it's not a sausage. It's a carrot that's been slowly braised mm. in mushroom soy and vegetable stock. And just puff pastry, bit of nigella seeds on the top. Oh, mm. it's absolutely beautiful. Isn't it yum? Oh, I'm really excited really about so that. It's so simple. Yeah, mm. so, so like simple. Like the ham. Yeah, well, like, exactly like the ham. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Um, and speaking of simple, something like the uh, the sweet potato toast here with mm. just some, the usual sort of stuff that you'd put on toast. So mm. this one, you know, cherry tomatoes, a bit of goat's cheese, some avocado. Mm. Um, if you would you like to risk getting some onto your top? Oh, yeah. This is yeah, what going to be scrum diddly mm. Okay. And thank again, you. all of these recipes will be available online yep. as well. So if you mm. want to try it out, there you go. Oh, thank that you. one's thank for you. you. Thank you. And while you do that, because that's a breakfast dish, I've actually brought that's you some... Uh, oh, thanks. <laughs> I brought along some lattes and they're broccoli Lattes. Broccoli? Yes. And hey, listen, I don't like to muck around with my coffee. What are you doing well, to me? I haven't put any coffee in these. And this is actually, so that when this story broke last year, I think that a lot of people kind of got stumped because they thought, I don't want coffee and broccoli together. But if you think about it as like a dehydrated broccoli powder utilising waste that would, you know, surplus broccoli, you look sceptical, but Michael, give it a taste. Okay. So it's frothed up milk and broccoli now, powder. I, I'm only doing this because I trust you others. Okay, thank you. I always have a lot of faith <laughs> in what you say. You've, you've never let me down before. Okay. okay I'll okay. preface <laughs> my taste test with that. Great. Are you going to leave a froth moustache? <laughs> of course he is. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> You're so classy. <laughs> now, what are you tasting, Michael? What does that taste like? I have another toast. It wasn't quite... <laughs> I can taste the broccoli. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. It's kind of more like a broccoli soup, right? Yeah. And so that's it's, it's far from inoffensive. Exactly. And so uh, I don't think far that's far from inoffensive. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not to me, it's not necessarily the best application. So I would actually use that powder through baking, like through a frittata or something like that. Yep. Anything that you'd use spirulina in. And then this one, the um the, the cauliflower couscous. Yep. Let me just scoop some of that on for mm. you. Oh, Lisa, your your plate is abounding. Uh, <laughs> this is gorgeous. So 
Mm. You treat it exactly oh, as you okay. would like a jeweled couscous. Yes. But instead of a grain, you have got cauliflower that's just been pulsed and softly sort of uh, sautéed. <laughs> Why do you always laugh when I eat? <laughs> well, because you relish it. I love, I love that you're just so stop. excited. I do think it's... Oh, ne that's neither that's of good, us have yet tried the watermelon. I know, we're putting, <laughs> we're putting it off. It. Maybe, um, did you want to try oh, that one or go straight to the ham? No, I'm going to let, um, I'm going to let Michael do that one. OK. Um, and uh, what, sorry, what was that one right down the front? That was that, also... That's some more sweet potato toast, but mm. we've just put different flavours. So you could even have that with like a drizzle of honey or, you know, peanut butter and, and jelly, whatever it is that you like to have on your toast, mm. just sub in the sweet potato. Broccoli okay. latte. Yeah, check that out. <laughs> check out the broccolate. You'll love it. <laughs> and it's an innovation that's come out of Australia, out of the CSIRO, mm. and it's gone. It's going to go global. I think that that I really reckon. shows, yeah, that, that's and, the future. And it's raising the serious issue of, you know, we're all trying not to waste food exactly. these days. Exactly. That's right. <clears throat> Did you just say this is the future of food? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's a direction of food. I'm, again, yeah, I'm so. not going to sub out my coffee for a broccolate, <laughs> but I think the idea of um, using what you've got mm. and utilising technology mm. to make sure that you know we can uh, be responsible for, yeah. for the environment yeah. is yeah. fantastic. Now I'm not going to put put this off any longer. Okay, it's time. Okay, <sighs> so we've carved we've room. carved some yeah, bits yeah. for you. Oh, yep, at the front. All right, all right. So, now you, uh, oh my, <laughs> here's a fork. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. You can serve, serve yourself. Mm. And, you know, the reason why it's so wet is who knew watermelon had so much water in it? <laughs> who, who knew? Who and so my question knew? is, does it taste a little bit like ham as well? Because it, it's had the brine and all the rest of it. Exactly. Oh, sorry, yes, man. and the smoke as well. So this has been hot smoked. Uh, some people cold smoke it as well. But you've right. got the char on top, which is the sugars caramelising. Yeah. You've got the brine, which has sort of spices and, and salts. Um, I've also glazed it Watermelon with ham. maple syrup. <laughs> Hold that up so that so that everyone yeah, can I will. see That's the texture. Good. If yeah. um, Scotty can get a shot of this, oh. it does taste a bit like ham. <laughs> what? But so then, why would a vegan want to eat something that tastes like meat? Well, I think that for, for people with dietaries, they're often looking for um, new and exciting ways to taste things that they would otherwise not get a chance to taste. Mm. So what is the nutritional um, factor of this? Uh, well, I would say that it wouldn't be something that I would be eating for the oh, purposes wow. of, of nourishing myself, mm. but it's certainly a bit of fun and you'd serve it up with other things. What do you think, Michael? Oh, listen, that's a taste sensation, Alice. And I can taste the mm. smoky uh, smokiness of it. So what, what did you season? Um, so I, I used uh, sort of things like clove and cardamom and, and mm, cinnamon, yep. yep, and I then um, the and, a, and a classic brine with sugar and salt. And I can see how this would go absolutely crazy with uh, vegans and yep. vegetarians, mm, as, as you said earlier. Yeah, and there's a fantastic vegan restaurant um, in Melbourne where they're actually serving, rather than a watermelon ham, it's watermelon smoked salmon. So <laughs> it's amazing how you can shift the, the shape of food. Well, yeah, it goes down well. <laughs> Alice, can you, before, we, before you disappear, can you do me a favour? Because there are so many people around the globe who have seen the pun pineapple hack <laughs> online in the last week, but Michael is not one of them. He doesn't know what we're talking about. I'm about the only person. Oh, listen, I've mm. seen this on Instagram and, and Twitter, uh -huh. but I've just never, uh, you never, clicked, I've on never clicked on the video. It was right. always, I'll get back to that, I'll get back to that. Can yeah, you, right. And how did it come about, maybe before we even sort of have you explain yeah. it? Well, funnily enough, uh, it came about through a video that somebody shared on Twitter and it was just a little WeChat video. I might, I might start segmenting as we do this. Yeah. It was just a little WeChat video of someone doing exactly this. Ready? I'm going to hold, I'm gonna hold this up. Okay, okay. thank so you. So as you're oh, doing good. it, you Excellent. can... Excellent. Okay. So they did that, right, which is kind of like a little bite-sized hors d'oeuvre mm. piece of pineapple. Uh, and the reason why it's gone gangbusters is because for a lot of people who have tried it, it hasn't worked. And right. that's because the pineapple needs to be really ripe, like this one. You yeah. can smell how ripe this yeah. pineapple is. Um, there we go. So and it's, just... it's like a new way oh, of eating honest. pineapple. It is, but the original pineapple was an Okinawa snacking pineapple, which is designed to be eaten in that way. And so if at home you're trying oh. it with a pineapple and it doesn't seem to be working, mm. it's fine. You can roll it across the bench to try and loosen up the, the fibres or you can um, just slice it like normal. It's a, it's a messy so way it's to gone it. viral. Viral. Oh, absolutely viral. When I tried it out and I just popped up a video saying, can 
confirm it works. It's already had over 250,000 views worldwide on my video. Yeah, and, yeah, and people are saying it's fake news. And I'm no, just like, no, 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 I did the thing. No. Yeah. <laughs> but you it are. needs to be really ripe if you're going to do it. Exactly. So all of these dishes, absolutely really tasty. Um, I can pass on the <laughs> uh, broccoli latte. <laughs> and all of them pretty easy. Mm -hmm. Maybe the ham. A little tough. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so if you want to serve that up for friends, call Alice. Or this. <laughs> Don't call it. I'm not doing that ever again. But the other recipes are all yours online. Uh, you're so a superstar, Alice. We really appreciate you making it with us. And in case we don't see you again for some time, oh, you're about to... Uh, Pop, pop out a watermelon. Uh, <laughs> she brought in his hair what watermelon. I prepared earlier. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Early congratulations, and uh, listen, I hope it really goes well. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank, you thank you so you. much you're for bringing welcome. this table in. It's fantastic. We'll talk about baby food <laughs> next time you're on. Sounds good. How's that?